Today, we are going to unravel the secret of the infinite pencil, which writes forever and doesn't need to be sharpened. And as a bonus, we will also understand what these letters and numbers that appear on all pencils are and what difference this makes when writing or drawing. And today, with us in the video are Asus and Intel, who invest a lot to make our daily lives easier with new technologies. They launched this year the Asus ZenBook S13 Flip OLED, a super light yet powerful laptop designed for those always on the go. It has a touch OLED screen, a special hinge, and transforms the computer into a tablet. It also comes with the Asus Pen 2.0, which also writes forever. In addition, it mimics the feeling of writing on paper, and for that, it also uses this secret number that comes here on the tip of the pens. In the end, what does this have to do with the infinite pencil? First, we need to understand how the pencil writes. And then comes a bombshell. It's the paper that scratches the pencil, not the pencil that scratches the paper. Most pencils are made of a layer of wood on the outside and inside. The part that actually writes is made of graphite, which is a super soft material, one of the softest we know. And it is so soft because microscopically, the carbon atoms that form the graphite are organized in the form of sheets that slide on top of each other, like the cards in a deck. When we write with a pencil, the force we apply at the tip ends up peeling off some layers of the graphite and these layers transfer to the paper. And the most curious thing is that one of the ways to compare the hardness of two different materials is to see which one scratches which. The one that gets scratched is because it is the softer one. After all, the harder material managed to peel off some pieces of it. So, since it's the paper that peels off the layers of graphite, which is softer, when we write, technically, it's the paper that's scratching the pencil. And look how cool, the softer the graphite, the darker the line will be, the more material the paper will be able to take off it. And of course, pencil manufacturers quickly figured this out and realized that they can control how the line will be drawn by controlling the hardness of the graphite. So how do they do this? Pure graphite itself is very hard, so if you were to scratch a paper with pure graphite, the line would come out very light. It's not good for much. What we have here at the tip of the pencil then is a pressed graphite with some additives. With some things they add here, we don't technically call this graphite, we call this inner part of the pencil lead. And one of the main things used to change the hardness of the graphite here in the lead is clay. The more clay you put in this mixture that goes here, the softer the tip of the pencil will become. So let's go. What do the numbers and letters that are here on the back of the pencil mean? Most manufacturers use the same classification, where the letter H stands for hard, which comes from the English word hard, and the letter B stands for black, which comes from the English word black. Uh, which is softer, the opposite of hard. The HB pencil is in the middle of the hardness scale, both hard and black simultaneously. But what if we want a pencil that's a little harder than the HB? What number would it have? Then we would use just the H with an increasingly higher number. After the HB, the next ones are H, 1H, 2H, 3H, 4H, and so on. It gets harder and harder with a thinner, lighter stroke. I'll use the 6H pencil here to show the difference. On camera, it appears slightly lighter, but only a little. Now in hand, we feel a very big difference. It's a much harder pencil. It resists a lot more when you're running it over the paper. And if we want a softer, darker pencil than the HB, the logic is the same, but we'll use the letter B. After HB, we'll have B, 1B, 2B, 3B, 4B, 5B, and so on. I'm gonna make a mark here with a 6B different. Now it's very clear the 6B is much darker than the HB. I have a collection of pencils here that are 14 pencils, okay? We can create a sample to illustrate the differences between the intermediates, although the input is incomplete. Just to make sure it's going to be straight, I'm going to mark it with a mechanical pencil first. If you take two pencils that are very close, you can't notice much difference. Now, when you compare a number that's far from the other, the difference starts to become glaring. See if you don't think it's time to give that thumbs up. There is another classification system, which is used mainly in the United States, that only has numbers. And then, the higher the number, the harder the graphite is. 
The most traditional pencil is number two, which is roughly equivalent to the HB used here. All right, but in practice, what is the purpose of all these different pencils? With softer pencils, we can have more control over contrast for shading and everything else. So they are more commonly used by artists. The harder pencils end up being finer. So they are more commonly used by those who are going to do some technical drawing who need to pay a lot of attention to some detail. Some left-handed writers may prefer harder pencils. Writing with your left hand causes you to go over what you just wrote. A harder pencil releases less graphite onto the paper. With that in mind, you might have guessed that the infinite pencil, which is this one here in my hand, must be an extremely hard pencil to release as little graphite as possible onto the paper. If you've never held one of these, the body is all plastic. The part that actually writes, the lead, is just at the tip, and this one here is theoretically an HB pencil. To start with, this pencil will never truly be infinite because look, it's leaving something here on the paper and when that thing runs out, this pencil will stop writing. Indeed, manufacturers don't promise that this will be a pencil that lasts forever and ever, but theoretically it writes the equivalent of a hundred normal pencils. And yes, it makes sense that it's an extremely hard pencil. We did a lot of research to find out exactly what's in the lead of this pencil, and no one reveals the formula, but in many places it was written that it's an ultra-compressed material. But this material can't simply be pure graphite, because if it was pure graphite, the line would be very light, and the line isn't that light. So it has to be a material that is both hard and extremely dark to balance each other out. The first test I'm going to do then is a 90 degree scratch from all these other scratches from the other pencils to understand which one it will most resemble. Notice that the line is extremely thin. It is thinner than the 6H. It looks more like a 05 mechanical pencil. Let me do another one with a 0.5 mechanical pencil for comparison. The thickness of the two lines is practically the same, but in the mechanical pencil it's much darker than in the infinite pencil. But what people want to know is how far this so-called infinity of the infinite pencil goes. How many meters does it write? Is there really a difference in the regular pencil? As you might have imagined, this is not a test that can be done using sheets and paper. Because I would spend days scratching here, it would be horrible to count, and it would also not be a very accurate test. We need something more repetitive. At first we thought of something like this. The pencil is writing on a paper that is on a roll, and this roll is running, is moving, but the pencil also needs to go from one side to the other. So on top, we would have a mechanism, a small motor that makes the pencil dance in zigzag. And then I need to confess something to you, we even got a treadmill to put this paper underneath and created a mechanism on top controlled by Arduino and everything else where the pencil went back and forth. But then the paper started to mess up all over and we realized that the treadmill didn't have a sufficient area for us to write a lot. In the end, it was a tremendous amount of work, but everything also went wrong, and we decided to go for a completely different solution, but even more technological. We hacked a printer. Basically, this is going to be a printer that, instead of using inkjet, it's going to use a real pencil. We disassembled the printer, and in place of the print head here, where the ink would go, we put a holder to put a pencil inside. This printer also won't work with regular paper, with bond paper. We put a roll of paper that is 50 meters long, so you'll be able to turn on the printer and let it print non-stop. To control the motors, we are no longer using the printer's board. I made a little scheme with Arduino and some relays, some electronic switches which control two motors, one that makes this back and forth movement and the other that is the paper feeder which keeps pulling the paper forward. The idea then is for the pencil to make horizontal lines on the paper that are very close to each other to make the most of the area we have to draw. We don't know if we'll be able to get these lines very tight, but if we can get a distance of one millimeter, we could print about 10 kilometers of line on this 50 meter roll. To ensure that someone is putting pressure on the pencil, we're going to put a little foot here on top. It will press the pencil down. The cool thing about putting a weight is that the force is constant from beginning to end. This makes no difference in the test. I'm already warning that the first test we're going to do is not with the infinite pencil. 
we're going to test a common pencil, a B pencil that most people use because we want to know after all how much a normal pencil writes before knowing how much the supposedly infinite pencil writes. Of course, how long or how many kilometers you're going to write with the pencil, depending on what pressure you put on it, what kind of paper you're using, how you sharpen the pencil, but we want to have at least an idea here. The annoying part of doing this first test before is that we're going to have to keep stopping to sharpen the pencil. We got this little sharpener here that it warns the moment when the pencil has already been sharpened. I picked up a pencil without a point, which we were testing. Look, I start to sharpen. When it comes time that it realizes there is a point, this point touches, there is something inside and goes pencil, and the little eyes go up. Let's begin the first test. I hope the pencil wears out quickly because this initial part is incredibly dull. Crossing fingers, here we go. Three, two, one. It's writing. It was, wasn't it? Let's go one more time. While our busted printer is working over there, let's understand what Asus did for us to have a real pencil feel and a pen that writes on the screen. Look, along with the pen, there are three extra tips that we can swap out. So there's the 2H that's already on the tip, but there's also the H, the HB, and the B. And because of the way each tip slides on the screen, it gives the sensation that you're writing with a pencil of a different hardness. In practice, it feels like you're drawing directly with the pencil. The 2H tip makes it very hard. When you put the B tip on, which is the opposite here, it feels like you're using more graphite on the paper, which in this case is the screen. And that makes total sense when drawing, because this computer was designed for this type of application. The ZenBook S13 Flip Organic Light Emitting Diode is an Intel Evo platform equipped with a 12th generation Intel Core i7 processor. In other words, it has a very large processing power. And besides that, it has integrated Intel Iris XA graphics and an organic light emitting diode screen with Pantone certification. This means that in addition to the ultra vivid colors of the organic light emitting diode, it can reproduce these colors with great fidelity. This is quite important for those who work with graphic content, for example, who need the colors they are seeing on the computer screen to be the same as those that come out in a print, for example. Look, you can't imagine how many hours this thing was running and what we have now is this here. I don't think we can consider this a pencil that writes anymore. So, let's consider the common pencil test finished, and now I need to calculate how many kilometers this thing has written. It's not that simple, look. Each line is 17 and a half centimeters. The problem is how many lines it's printing. So I'm gonna roughly measure how many lines were drawn in 100 centimeters or one meter. In one meter, there are 522 lines. This means that in one meter of paper, the pencil covered 91 meters and 35 centimeters. The question now is how many meters of paper I have here? Next time, we'll devise a self-counting scheme, right? 13 meters and 92 centimeters, which gives one kilometer and 271 meters. There's just one detail in all of this. That wasn't the only paper he printed. There's a whole roll here, let's measure. Forty five meters and 15 centimeters. These numbers that I'm calculating here are under these conditions that we established in manual do mundo. One important thing we noticed is that when sharpening the pencil, we end up using a lot of the graphite, sometimes also breaking the tip and you waste a section there that could write. But this happens to everyone, right? When using a pencil, you end up breaking a little tip or another. And this has to be considered when we calculate how much the pencil writes. A pencil, a single pencil, was able to write 5 kilometers, 395 meters. It's a never-ending sharp point. Just to give you an idea, if I had used bond paper, instead of using this roll, it would have given about 200 sheets of fully written bond paper. Does the infinite pencil write more than that? I thought the infinite pencil would have a much lighter stroke, but it's very similar to the other one, even darker, maybe. 
the infinite and the normal one. I have two bad news and only bad news. The first is that a leak has started here in the room. It rained a lot. There was a problem with a gutter here. And we had to improvise this beautiful umbrella on top of the printer. Because if we move the printer from this place, it will be a huge hassle to put it somewhere else. And this room is the only room where noise can be made all day long anyway. It was the best we could do. The second news is that after a few hours of use, the infinite pencil broke. There was also an issue with the test. Because this weight that was on top, it went down as the tip wore out and then it touched the end. And what happens is that when the pencil went to scratch, it didn't have enough weight on top. The weight was catch, not. So you can notice that in the last hours of work, the pencil didn't complete the line it had to complete. But of course, if this happened to me, I wouldn't throw the pencil away. I would sand the tip as if I were sharpening it and continue using it. That's what I'll do now. I'll sand the tip of the infinite pencil using a 320 grit sandpaper. As you can see, indeed, it is an extremely dark material, much darker than graphite. The graphite appears mixed with charcoal and it's sharpened. An interesting thing to think about is that when you use a pencil, the tip wears down and you unconsciously turn the pencil tip to always get the sharpest, most pointed part on the paper. This means that you kind of sharpen the pencil while you're using it, and this could happen with this pencil here if we were using it normally, because you use the pencil at an angle. Not here. It was at 90 degrees from the paper going back and forth. It would never self-sharpen like we do. Let's continue the test. Look, that roll is already over. We had to change it. The pencil wore out the tip again. We sharpened it, wore out the tip again, sharpened it, sharpened it three times in total until the infinite pencil ran out. This tip no longer works. Final verdict, rounding off the numbers. The common pencil wrote 5 kilometers and 400 meters. The infinite pencil, which supposedly lasts 100 times longer than the common pencil, wrote 4 kilometers and 900 meters. Lost by a landslide. Since the first test we did there on the treadmill to see if it worked and all, we already noticed that the tip of the infinite pencil was wearing out at a pace faster than we expected. But it would never cross my mind that it would write less than a regular pencil. Perhaps one advantage they have is that you have to sharpen them very little, because we sharpened the other wooden pencil several times. This one was only three times. The difference is that I had to sharpen the infinite pencil with a sandpaper, and not everyone carries a file in their backpack. Man, it's crazy to see how a simple idea inspires several other evolutions over time. In the old days, the pencil was the top of technology of tools for writing and drawing. Today, we already have a pen that writes on the computer screen, full of functions, buttons, and that still gives that feeling of comfort when using something familiar. Now I need to find out where to send paper for recycling. I was curious to know how many kilometers does a pen write. You didn't either. Want to see another super cool video about writing and how things evolve over time? We recorded a video showing why the computer keyboard starts with Q-W-E-R-T-Y and you will find out that not all start with Q-W-E-R-T-Y. Good night.